Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Um, this video I'm going to put in the in the uh, lipid biosynthesis playlist um, just because it has to do with lipid biosynthesis. Um, so if we have the glycerophospholipid phosphatidylcholine, the head group as we talked about is choline. And uh, frequently, if we you know if we consume something that has phospholipids and in the intestines, uh, lipases are going to remove the remainder of this, which is really just a phosphatidate, and we'd be left with choline. And the question is, what happens to the choline? Okay, the choline can be used as is, but it it also has to have a way to be degraded. And so that's what we're going to talk about in this video. We're going to talk about choline metabolism, but we're also going to see that there's a byproduct of this called betaine, which can still be metabolized further, but betaine actually provides some cardio protection, which we'll talk about um, as we go throughout this video. So phosphatidylcholine gets degraded into choline, and then the remainder is phosphatidate, which can be uh, used for other things. So choline, about 3% of this is excreted. The body is going to hold on to choline um, because it actually views it as pretty valuable. So choline is going to be metabolized into this molecule called betaine aldehyde. Sometimes the full name is glycine betaine aldehyde. Um, just because this is actually a derivative of glycine. But this is catalyzed by the enzyme choline oxidase. And notice what it's doing. It's converting this alcohol group into an aldehyde. So just taking it up one oxidation state. And then betaine aldehyde can be converted into just betaine by the enzyme betaine aldehyde dehydrogenase. Notice what it's doing. It's converting this aldehyde into a carboxyl group. Now, betaine is, if you notice, it has a nitrogen with three uh, methyl groups on it. It's a trimethylated glycine because we've got the nitrogen, the alpha carbon with two hydrogens, and a carboxyl group. For that reason, betaine is sometimes called glycine betaine or trimethylglycine, okay? But we'll refer to it as betaine. And in fact, betaine will actually be marketed as betaine hydrochloride as a supplement, and you can find this in some drugstores due to the fact that it actually is pretty valuable to the body. And if you actually consume it about, or if it's uh, produced from choline metabolism, about 97% of it is actually reabsorbed. And we're going to talk about two things that happen with betaine. One is its cardiovascular protective effects. We'll talk about that first. Then we'll go into its mode of degradation, which will ultimately be to the amino acid glycine. So this is a pathway or a cycle that you, you people have probably seen uh, in the past, probably in a Biochem 2 course. Um, if you haven't seen it, the SAM cycle or methionine cycle, this is a pathway to resynthesize methionine um, and also generate something called s adenosyl methionine, which is a molecule that's used in most methylation reactions in the body. If you've taken any genetics course or cell biology course, you've probably heard of DNA methylation. It's part of epigenetic regulation. DNA methylation uses the methyl group that's donated by SAM, s adenosyl methionine. And so this pathway just basically takes s adenosyl methionine and we ultimately get methionine back. So that's why it's called the methionine cycle. Well, if we have uh, methionine, it can be converted to s adenosyl methionine. Um, then s adenosyl methionine in various methyl transferase reactions. In fact, there's a methyl transferase reaction to actually generate choline. That's how these methyl groups actually get there. We actually saw that in one of the previous videos, phosphatidylethanolamine and methyl transferase. But in any case, um, through methyl transferase reactions, the s adenosyl methionine loses its methyl group and becomes s adenosyl homocysteine, SAH. The s adenosyl homocysteine goes back to homocysteine through an enzyme. But then here's the kicker. This is the important reaction that actually has clinical implications. The reaction of methionine synthase actually takes homocysteine and regenerates methionine. Now this is important for a couple of reasons. Um, this B12-dependent reaction, vitamin B12, generates methionine. So that's obviously important because without the methionine, you can't generate SAM, and then you're going to have a low degree of methylation, and that's going to cause problems. But it actually turns out that homocysteine, or at least elevated levels of it in the blood, actually correlate with cardiovascular disease and all sorts of um, things that, errors with blood vessel, with the vasculature, um, things like uh, atherosclerosis. So 
apparently, and I'm not sure that they know why this is, it may not directly have to do with homocysteine, but the point is, is homocysteine levels in the blood actually correlate with cardiovascular disease. So it actually is important for whatever reason to actually get rid of the homocysteine. And the way you do that is by converting it to methionine. It turns out there's two ways to do this. One is by the reaction of methionine synthase. Now, the thing about this reaction is, is that it requires B12. In fact, it actually requires two cofactors. One of them's not shown here, it's an indirect uh, requirement. The indirect requirement is actually uh, tetrahydrofolate. I believe it's actually methyl tetrahydrofolate, and this form of folate, or tetrahydrofolate, comes from folate. So that's a B vitamin, and so if you're deficient in folate, then this uh, reaction would potentially suffer. But also, the more common uh, deficiency is actually B12. This is actually a more common deficiency in people who eat a Western diet that's very uh, devoid of nutrients, and then also vegetarians and vegans, because those diets tend to be lower in B12 regardless. And so... If, for any reason that you're deficient in B12, it, e it even could be a deficiency of the absorption of it, like in deficiency of intrinsic factor in the stomach. Anything that depletes you of B12 depletes you of this reaction. And so what that would cause is lower methionine and elevated homocysteine. That's bad. Fortunately, there's another reaction, a different enzyme, that can still do this conversion from homocysteine to methionine. It just is completely different. This is the reaction of betaene homocysteine S-methyl transferase. This reaction, this enzyme, still converts homocysteine to methionine, but instead of using B12 or folate, it just requires betaene. And so betaene will get consumed by this reaction, and you'll get out dimethylglycine, which is actually what I'm showing right here in the next slide. We'll talk about that in a minute. The point is, is you can actually get around this reaction by if you don't have sufficient supplies like B12 or folate by actually using betaene and a different enzyme. And so that's actually the theory as to why betaene is so important um, and why people will actually take it as a supplement because if you have elevated homocysteine, it's going to eventually cause or at least correlate with cardiovascular disease. And so if you supplement betaene, it can actually accelerate the removal of homocysteine and conversion back to methionine. Therefore, it's cardiovascular protective effects, cardioprotection. Okay? So this reaction, this betaene homocysteine S-methyl transferase, is actually the first step in betaene's metabolism which I've shown right here. It will actually convert the betaene to dimethylglycine. Of course, in the process, you also get uh, methionine from homocysteine. Now, there's a couple other reactions here that are fairly straightforward what they're doing. We're just having a couple demethylation reactions. So dimethylglycine will be, uh, one of these methyl groups will be removed, actually is formaldehyde, and that's catalyzed by dimethylglycine oxidase. That gives you monomethylglycine, also called sarcosine. Sarcosine is the common name for monomethylglycine. Notice this is really just glycine, but with a methyl group on the, uh, on the amine. And then sarcosine oxidase, also called monomethylglycine oxidase, removes this final methyl group as formaldehyde, uh, basically the same mechanism as this enzyme over here, and we end up with the amino acid glycine. And um, You can go back to the amino acid degradation playlist where we talk about glycine's mode of metabolism, um, but it can actually be used ultimately to degrade to pyruvate. Okay? So hopefully this video made some sense to you. Um, hopefully you understand uh, where the choline's coming from. It can come through the diet, but it can also come from phosphatidylcholine metabolism and choline release. Choline will then get degraded through a couple of enzymes to betaene, but betaene is pretty much the, the most important thing here, at least from the cardioprotection point of view. And then the betaene can be metabolized further into the amino acid glycine. So we get some recycling there that can be very important. Um, also note that the choline, in addition to being metabolized, can also just be repackaged into phospholipids. Um, that's going to occur through something called the Kennedy pathway, which we'll cover in another video explicitly. But there's, this is the fate of choline and then ultimately the betaene that's produced from that. All right, so hopefully you understood this and it made some sense to you and was interesting. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.